What's up guys? It's GT, I am the Ty, coming back at you with part 14, or part 14 and 15 of Donkey Kong Country 3, let's, the, uh, Donkey Kong Double Trouble, the Let's Play, and, um, today we're gonna ca tackle, I think it's Floodlit Fish, it's not Animal Antics, but it's like, it's like Pothole, oh, Pothole Panic, and then Ropey Rumpus, and then, um, Barbwood Barrier, I might split it into two videos, so maybe I won't cover everything in one, because basically, um, all four of those things span about 20 minutes, and I don't want to make a 20 minute video because I don't like to click 20 minute videos. I don't know about you guys, but um, really long videos are exactly what they are. They're really, really long, and nobody wants to deal with them. But um, this is Floodlit Fish, and for those of you who don't know how to play um, this particular level, you poke a really, really fat fish that's glowing. I don't know if that's because he's an angel or because he is has eaten toxic waste. Or um, you guys can tell me what, why you think that. A really, really fat fish is glowing in the dark. Because that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. He doesn't look, he's not glowing like a neon fish. Because, I mean, neon fish would make a lot more sense. But, um... Let me just go ahead and dash through here. And then, um... Yeah, it's basically just a water level. And, you know, it's like obligatory crappy water levels in every single Donkey Kong Country game. Um, t tell me if you guys like water levels. I hate water levels with a passion. But, um... They always have it. Here's a bonus right here. But, you know, they always seem to have a water level, and there's nothing good about water levels. Like, water levels are designed to make you miserable. I'm pretty sure that's the intent of the designer. You know, like, when you played, uh, when you back, you played Mario Brothers, like, water levels are no fun. Um, Donkey Kong Country is pretty much the same way, um, for Donkey Kong Country 1. It was actually even worse than it is now for Donkey Kong Country 3 and for 2. Because at least in 3 and 2, they gave you the animal a whole bunch, and... And, like, the, the bad guys are more colorful, they're more creative, you know, what, yada yada. But, you know, the first one, it was, like, really unimaginative bad guys. Like, you didn't have clownfish in the first one. You had, like, really poorly rendered, um, jellyfish. Like, tentacles, or whatever you want to call them. And, um, like, all the water levels in Donkey Kong Country 1 made me rage in, in anger. So, <laughs> I don't know if you guys used to do that when you were little, but I definitely raged whenever I played a water level. Man, that was good dodging skills right there. I'm impressed with my playthrough right here. But, um, I mean, I don't think I grabbed the O. Yeah, I didn't grab the O for that one, if I recall correctly. I've only played this, like, four days ago, and uh, once again, this is probably going to be my last post-narration, or post-play narration, I should say, to be more accurate. Because I like to narrate it live, and then hopefully, and I think I'm good enough at the game where I can narrate it live, and I don't fail too much. And then obviously if I fail a whole bunch, then what I do is I normally just kind of chop up the video into pieces, um, string it together as one, and then narrate that whole thing again. And that normally works out pretty well, but um, I'm going to see if I can get through the rest of the game um, just doing a live commentary. So I'm going to pretty much end all the commentary stuff for this one. But anyway, I believe that there is, um, the one nice thing about the water levels in Donkey Kong Country 3 is that you don't have to worry about the DK coin at the end, because you know how the, how Coin Dozer actually holds the coin as a shield. I'm actually pantomiming holding a really big coin in my hand right now. Obviously, you guys can't see that, so I kind of look like an idiot. <laughs> but, um, like, I'm holding, picture me holding, well, you guys don't even know what I look like. Just ignore everything I just said. Picture somebody, like David Hasselhoff, holding a really, really big DK coin. But, um, but, you know, that's, like, the only way you get a DK coin in this entire game, so... You don't have to worry about getting in an underwater level, because obviously, if the lizard was sitting underwater, he would drown. And that would be kind of funny, but, you know, that would be very, very tragic. And Nintendo would have to give Donkey Kong Country 3 a T rating instead of an E rating. So, um, that was a really, really easy bonus. Man, I hope I can finish this level in one shot. That would be amazing. I'm flying through this thing. I'm trying to figure out why the heck I would get 18 minutes. I probably... No, I think I died at some point in this, and I probably have to play through this whole thing again. Ooh, but wait, I only have one Donkey Kong. Why Why am I moving so quickly? Oh, yeah, that's, that's stupid. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Um, Unnecessary death for the win, number one. But that is both of the bonuses, and the DK coin is at the very end of the level. So um, we're going to go ahead and just try to backtrack straight through that area again. And, you know, in the meantime, I guess I might as well talk about other things about my channel. Um, I'll have another, um, another Wi-Fi battle up in a little bit. Obviously, I think I need to go on Smogon and then go hunt for, for some battles. That seems like the prime place to go get some battles. Obviously, um, there's some chat sites where I don't have to, like, register and then do all this other crap. But totally wouldn't mind doing that. And actually, if any of my users want to, um, challenge me, 
feel free to shoot me a PM, and um, I would be more than happy to. I'll give you my Skype name, and if I'm online, and I am totally up to it, I am more than happy. I, I do have a lot of things going on right now. I'm actually in the middle of studying for, uh, for a test to try to get into grad school, and um, a whole bunch of other crap, so... So really, Wi-Fi battles are just kind of, it's just kind of a hobby thing that I'm doing, you know, like putting videos up on YouTube, it's just a fun thing for me to do, it's not really anything, I'd never have any intent, intention of ever getting a partnership, nor do what I think that anybody would want to give me a partnership anyway, but I just think it's, you know, it's just kind of a fun thing to do, it's a way to pass the time, it's a way to share my love for video games, whether it be platforming, Pokemon, um, whatever, with you guys, um, Speaking of Pokemon, I just gotta throw this out there. I'm, I'm gonna, I'll put a video, or I'll put a picture of this really, really awesome thing that I got from one of my friends for Christmas in my next video. Like, right at the beginning of a Pokemon battle, because I feel like that's when it's the most appropriate. But he freaking gave me the most epic shirt of all time. He gave me a, um... He gave me a blue shirt, which when I first got it, I was like, wait, who the hell gave me a blue shirt? Like, it's a plain old blue t-shirt. I didn't even take it out of the wrapping, because I didn't, because they didn't have a to and from card on it, because apparently, um, he asked the people to give, to put the to and from card, but they didn't actually do it. So, um, so, you know, I just thought it was a plain old blue shirt, and I thought maybe, like, my mom gave it to me, because my mom always gives me really, really heinous clothes. Obviously, if my cousin's watching this, do not tell her. I think that she has terrible taste in clothing. Um, that would be, um, disastrous. So, um, <laughs> I guess you have leverage on me. Just don't tell my mom that I think that she has terrible taste in clothing. It's like, she wears heinous colors. Like, I'm not even, like, a fashion person, but, you know, like, magenta is not a good color. Um, lime green is not a good color. Um, just, you know, give, where, give me some blue, give me some straight up brown, yeah, some normal neutral colors, like, like, I don't want, I don't want anything too, uh, too vibrant, you know, it's like, I, who, who, who the hell, who the hell wears vibrant clothes, unless you can pull it off, like, my dad can pull it off, I don't even want to try to pull it off, so, um, but anyway, I, that was a major tangent, straight up my cousin, because I know he watches the, uh, these videos, but he gave me the most, but, back to my friend, he gave me the most epic t-shirt, and it had, and it freaking has a squirtle, like an emblem of a squirtle on the side of it, like on the, on the bottom part, so I swear I'm gonna wear that all the time when I get a chance, I'm gonna wash it first, because I don't know what the hell's in plastic bags, but they smell really, really bad, so I gotta wash that shirt first, and obviously, um, if it shrinks, I don't care, I'll, like, stretch it, and do, like, my Hulk impression, and then just, like, pull at it, and then ruin it, and then cry <laughs> at night, but, um, it's a freaking Squirtle shirt, and Squirtle is by far the, the coolest Pokemon. Um, if you guys want to let me know what your favorite Pokemon is, then um, feel free to leave it in the comment box. I, I would love to hear. I mean, Squirtle just kind of been mine for a really, really long time. Back when I played Generation 1. And the funny thing is, I didn't even get into Pokemon until I got a Game Boy Advance, and it was back in, I think, 96 or so. It was, um, if my cousins... Well, I know my cousin's going to watch this eventually, but it was the summer that I went to Atlanta the first time and actually saw him for the first time since I think I was like three or two or something but um but I picked up a Game Boy Color because I was like you know I'm going down to Atlanta and what's to do in Atlanta well, not necessarily what's to do in Atlanta but what's to do in Georgia per se you know like cause, cause my cousin was a lot younger than me at the time not the cousin that I'm talking about but my other cousin he's also kind of crazy well I don't know how crazy he is now maybe my Maybe he calmed down, but he was like, he had like ADHD or something, like he has, he has way too much energy for his own good, and I was just, I just kind of sat there for a while, and I was like, you know what, I need to find a way to pass the time, I'm going to get myself a Game Boy Color, and the thing is, I used to always watch my friend playing on, you know, like, I think he had like a Game Boy Slim at the time, but he had Pokemon, and he used to always use a Pokemon that he called Fast Poke. and at the time, I didn't know anything about Pokemon, he was actually using a Blastoise, which I think is the... Um, two things, that's one of the stupidest nicknames you could ever give, um, a Blastoise, but it's also kind of funny, because, I mean, Blastoise is a tortoise, and he's slow as hell, so a fast poke, I guess, is kind of appropriate, but, um, I don't even know why he called it fast, but I think it's because, um, the guy was called Slowbro, uh, I mean, because he was, um, he was looking at the fact that one of the Pokemon was called Slowbro, and he's like, I'm gonna call this guy fast poke, or, you know, like, slow poke, fast poke, so I think that was the logic behind it, that's how creative we were when we were little, like, we're so... <laughs> I'm so ashamed at, at our childhood now, because <laughs> we can't come up with good names. Everyone else is coming up with awesome nicknames, you know, like, um, if you watch MTG Xerxes, when he names his, uh, his Gastrodon, he calls it Shoe Puff, because, you know, cause that's a reference to, you know, to, to Final Fantasy games, and, and, and different things of that nature. 
Um, like I try to reference a couple of, of things in, in my in my nickname sometimes too, but you know, sometimes it's just kind of over your head. Like that's why Clefable named Sailor Moon, and plus I've never seen a Clefable named Sailor Moon, ironically, which is really weird. Because I mean, like, it's a moon Pokemon, or a lunar Pokemon, or whatever you want to call it. It just seems like an appropriate name to give it. But, um... Yeah, but he gave me a Squirtle shirt, and it was really, really epic. That, that, that's a long story short. Um, yeah, condensed story right here. He gave me a Squirtle shirt. It was really, really awesome. And it doesn't necessarily say Squirtle on it. It doesn't have a picture of a Squirtle. So you're not going to have any kind of guilt about you wearing it or doing anything with it. So... I mean, like, it's just a really, really awesome gift. I can't thank him enough. I, I will give you guys a picture of it. I'll, I'll post it in front of the next video, and it'll be a lot of fun. Like, that was an awesome gift. And then, um... And then my other friend gave me a game called Amnesia, The Dark Descent. But that was Pothole Panic, and then this is Ropey Rumpus. But he gave me... He gave me a game called Amnesia, The Dark Descent. And I will put a little clip... Where I'm not gonna put a clip of it in my active video, but I'll leave a link to this game like, footage of this game that people play it, and it's, it's probably, like, the scariest... I'm not gonna use the F word because I'm trying to be very PG-13 on my channel, but it's freaking scary as hell. That's all That's all I'm gonna say. It's, it's freaking scary as hell. Obviously, I'm, you know, grab that barrel, take it down there, this is the bonus. And I failed, okay. Because my, my video is lagging again, so that's why I'm just talking about random stuff. But, uh... But it's called Amnesia The Dark Descent, for those of you who are interested. If you're really into horror genres, definitely go check that out. YouTube it. I will leave a link to a really, really funny video that I think of people actually trying to play this. And what basically what it is, is, you know, it's like, you're wandering around in a castle. I think the person has amnesia. Like, they can't remember a damn thing. And basically what's happening is that... It's just like creepy shit's happening. You're walking around, and they're just playing creepy music. There's like a weird ghoul something or other that is randomly around corners and other things. And if he sees you, there's like no escaping him. You're like, you're totally, totally screwed. And basically, like, you can grab doors, open stuff, um, move stuff in front of doors. That way, if he sees you, maybe you can buy yourself some time while you hide in a closet and then cry to your mom. Like, like it's, it's actually a really, really terrifying game. I do not know why the hell he got me that game. Because we were watching footage, and I'm laughing at these people. Because, you know, it's like... Because because they're screaming like little girls. <laughs> That's the reason why it's so funny. But, um... But, you know, when the joke is on you and you're actually playing the game, it's, it's scary as hell, that, that's all I gotta say, and I'm terrified to play that game, like, you can't play that at night, like, I do all this narration stuff, all this gameplay stuff at night, so if I'm at my house alone, which I'm probably gonna be in a couple of days, because my dad actually just got married, so, you know, congratulations to him, this is my congrats to him, um, he just got remarried, and, um, my sister's gonna be going back to the UK to, um, finish up her year studying abroad pretty soon. I'm going to be all alone at the house, and if I play this at night, which is what I intend to do, because I plan to do a lot of studying and other things in the afternoon, um, you know, obviously i got to go hunt for Wi-Fi battles at night, and do all that other crap, but if I play that game at night, I'm not going to be able to go to sleep. It's terrifying. It's, it's a game that will literally haunt you in your, in your sleep. But um, I, I think I died because I was looking for a DK coin, if you guys are wondering what's going back on in the gameplay. <laughs> I, I feel a little bit guilty because I can't actually talk about the gameplay as it's going on right now because um because of the post narration and the lag it's just it's just not feasible for me like i have no idea what's going on but you guys are watching so all i can do is kind of talk about things that are going on and then another other and other things i'm actually in red latios 07's um tournament for like to start the year i think it's like a fourth gen 3 ou and then whatever else i don't tend to use a whole bunch of ou pokemon anyway so that's not a that's not a big deal it's like making a standard team for me, but I think I might just use my old team, like the the team that I've showcased against uh, Jackie Chan 82. I'll be I should probably switch out Rhyperior. I'll probably switch out Rhyperior for someone who has Stealth Rocks, because if I do actually want to win the tournament, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need to have Stealth Rocks up on the field in the event that I come across somebody who is um who's running a stall team. Because if he's gonna do a lot of switching, I need to find some way to take him out other than him whittling me down the whole time. So um. But this is real, but once again, this is Ropey Rumpus, and it's actually a really, really easy level. Good music. I you you do have to save this bird. This bird gives you a bonus. It's actually really, really it's really important because he turns into a bonus barrel once you get that like the no birds allowed sign at the end of the level. So don't let a bee hit him, obviously. And um. 
Hmm, what else do I want to say about Ropey Rumpus? Nothing I want to say about Ropey Rumpus other than I really, really hate bees and they kill you a whole bunch. And I don't know why these are like mechanical bees, or you guys can let me know. But I like the original bees in the first, uh, in the first Donkey Kong Country. Maybe they're wasp. Maybe, maybe you guys can correct me. But like, but like an actual bee was a lot more terrifying than like this weird buzzsaw mechanical bee that they have right here. Now I'm thinking about other things that I might want to talk about since I can't talk about the gameplay. Oh, I, I can hear the flag. That means I probably got to the end of the level, so that's nice. I guess I'm only a couple of, of seconds behind. Actually, I'm way behind, but the video keeps on skipping. But anyway, this is Barbo's Barrier. And um, this guy is a total pushover, and he has three stages. Um, the first stage involves... Actually, what I'm watching right now is me swimming towards the thing and clicking on the level, but what you guys are probably watching, if I can visualize what I'm doing right now, is I'm poking these weird, these weird orc, like those spiky, um, like cloister-looking people. I'm not cloister, but like shelter people. And then, you know, you just poke them in the fleshy part, and then they kind of bounce, and then, you, you know, you just knock off the two shell pieces surrounding him, and then poke his little fleshy body. And then you move to the second part of the stage, and the second part of the stage is he shoots out this weird homing seashell at you, and what you do is, you know, you just kind of move your body around, and then get the seashell to, to try to fire at you, and then just kind of move out of the way when it starts to shoot, and then it'll hit the little spiky people that are protecting him, knock out both of them, and then, you know, just kind of poke them, get to that part, and then I believe the final part just kind of involves... He, he's, he's shooting out a little spiky thing from his bottom part at the very end. And basically what you do is, you know, when he's done shooting, he starts doing this weird bobbing thing. Like he's bobbing for apples. Like he opens up and then closes. You know, like how people kind of move their head back and forth with their neck. I'm like moving my head that you guys can't see. But... But, you know, you just kind of... When he's done shooting, just go up there, poke him in the head. And, um, you know, just rinse and repeat. I think you do that three times, and that takes him out. It's really, really easy. Um, not a whole lot to do. But I just want to finish up Razor Ridge. I want to get all this post-narration crap out of the way. I don't have to ever worry about this shit again. Because... But I hear that I got the thing, and I'm going to assume that you're going to see me flushing down the... What I think is a toilet. I, like, I think that Barbo's Barrier is like a giant toilet, and then they just flush me out into the other thing, which is really, really awkward. But uh, I'm not going to think about that too much. And then anyway, um, you see a castle in, in the distance, which you didn't see before. That is Chaos Core, and that is the final area of the game, if you don't count for... Um, if you don't account for the Lost World, which is Krematoa. So we're gonna, when we pick up next time, I believe the first level there is Conveyor Rope Clash. And I don't remember what the second level is, but um, who cares, right? <laughs> um, obviously, like, comment, and sub. Um, click that like button if you enjoyed the video. Um, sub to me if you like my channel in general. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Bye.